Hey everyone, Andrew Chalman here with MachineSkills.com. If you find this tutorial helpful, there are plenty more like it on our website. If you want even more tutorials, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Okay, so in this video, I'll be going over internal sampling in machine. It's not something that I use a lot. But when I do use it, it allows me to do some very creative things, so I figured it's worth a video. Okay, so in my project here, I have three different groups. I have my sample group, my drums, and my bass. And I'll be working with my drum group right now. I have two kick samples layered together. Right now I'm using Padlink to um, make sure those play in conjunction. If you're not familiar with that, you can open it up just by pressing here. You can see that my first kick is located on group one, and my second kick is located on the same group, so those play together. But what I want to do is bounce those down to a single sound slot. That will allow me to work with some effects a little bit more easily. So that is what I want to accomplish with this internal sampling. So the first thing that I'll do is select an empty sound slot. I'll do that right here. I'm going to call this one layered. And also, just to make sure it's keeping everything straight, I'll change this color. And um, I'll easily be able to refer to this when I want to. So now that I have my new sound ready to go, I'm going to enter into sampling mode. Just do that by pressing the waveform icon here. Now, making sure I'm on the record tab out of these options here, I'm going to go down to source and select internal. Now, once you have this selected, you can see that there's several different input options. For your project, you'll be able to select any of your group outputs, and you can also select the master output as well. So for now, I'm just working with my drums, so I'll just select that. Now, once that's good, you can select between detect and sync. If you have detect ready to go, um, you'll be able to move this threshold little triangle thing wherever you want it, and um, once your audio level um, goes over that threshold, it will automatically start recording. So a nice idea is to play your sample, and you can ensure that the level is crossing over that triangle, and that will trigger the recording to start. Um, if you want to work with sync, that's another good option, and I'll be showing you how to do that right after I work with this, um, this first project right now. Okay, so I have it um, all set and ready to go. I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on my sound slot that I created a little bit ago because this will be where we're recording to. So that's all good to go. I'm just going to hit start and then play my sample a few times and I'll choose the best take out of that afterwards. Once you hit stop, you can go down to your sample and um, here you can see all the different takes. And I'll quickly edit this. Um, I'll just work with this middle one, bring these things in here, I'll truncate it, make sure I get right up to the start, and a little bit quiet so I can hit the normalize feature there, and I have a nice recorded layered kick sample that I can now, now put some effects on. And as a quick note, after you record um, with the sampler, you'll have to go into um, the pitch and envelope options of the, um, the sampler here and select one shot if you want. That's just going to make sure the whole thing plays at once. I also like to bring down my polyphony um, just to make sure um, that thing gets layered in some weird fashion, makes things sound kind of clean to my ears. And so the whole point of this was allowing me to add some effects on here. I'll throw in some transient master, bring down the attack, and bring up the attack, bring down the sustain. I can also add a maximizer, bring down these a little bit, just kind of fatten things up. So you can see it's a lot easier to add on these effects onto a single sound than going into my um, my individual layers of my kick and working with those. So a um, nice option here, keeps things easy to work with. And now I have this nice fat kick sample located on a single pad, ready to go, easy to play, everything is sounding good. So overall, that's one way to use internal sampling is to um, sort of bust down different parts of a sample and make sure they're all nice and easy to work with. Now there's another thing I like to do, and that is um, kind of bring my different groups onto single pads, and this is a great idea for um, live performances. So I'm gonna stay in my drum group here. What I want to do is create a pad that has my sample melody located on it. So I'm going to go back into sampling, make sure I'm on this do pad here, back into sampling here to record, and now I'm going to move to my sample group here, and I'll go to my sync option here, like I talked about earlier, we'll be working with this. You can see we have a couple different options for our length. You can do any of these bars or your free length here, and then you'll just be able to stop it whenever you want. And for now, I'm going to match my scene. So up here, you can see it's four bars long. 
So I'll match that with a four bar um, sample length here. So once I hit start, it's going to be waiting for me to play it. And I'm going to, um, on the hardware, just press the restart button here, play back my project from the beginning, and that will record a four bar pattern onto my pad. So we'll do that now. So as soon as that hits the four bar mark, you can see that the sample is already located on this pad. So I'm going to bring up the volume here a little bit. And I'm going to go back into the sampler like I did with my drums. Put my polyphony on one, change my mode to one shot, and that will um, be helpful for playing this live. And I'm going to go back to another empty slot here and do the same thing with my bass. So I'm going to go sampling, record, I'm going to change my input to bass. Everything is good to go again, and I'll do the same thing. And just like I did before, I'll change this to one shot, go back into my polyphony, change that to one, so um, everything is good to go, and now we can do some neat live performances, and I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So there we go, just like that you can condense your entire project onto just the pads in a single group and play it live. I hope this video encourages you to work with internal sampling in Machine. As always, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.